Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video is on how I created this resin um, pour on this wine glass. Now, just let me move in a little bit closer. Now, as you can see, um, the resin is it looked quite quite effective on this glass. Now, as you know, if you were to pour resin onto a glass or any substrate that's got a curve or anything like that it would just pour off and you would left, be left with a very thin layer of resin and not much else happening on there, you would lose the colours and what have you. So for this project I wanted to create a thick layer of resin um, but also to have it look quite organic. So how I did that was poured some resin onto some baking paper, left it to cure just long enough for me to transfer it across um, so that it wasn't too hard but wasn't too sticky either so that it just it was able to stick to the glass and uh, this is what we came up with so without further ado let's get on with the video so I mixed up a batch of clear resin about 400 mils worth and that was enough to do two large wine glasses. Now these wine glasses can actually hold a whole bottle of wine so that gives you an idea on how large these glasses are. So I've just poured um, some small blobs of resin onto the baking paper. I also mixed up um, a small batch um, in with La Res Expressions pigments. So this one it's Cosmic Blue and I also mixed up a small batch of magenta blues. Now these were very, very kindly given to me by Susanna Danks from uh, La Res Expressions. She sent me a whole batch of sample pigments for, for me to try out. So this is the first real project I've done using these pigments. I have used the white on a previous one and you'll see my thoughts on the white in the previous video. But for the, for the time being, this is the first time using these particular colours. So all you can see here is I'm just adding a touch of pink and blue to the clear. Now I'm not going to mix overly mix this because I actually want some of the clear to appear on the glass so that you've got um, some you've got some definition between the colours. And then using the stick, just swirl it about ever so lightly. Uh, you don't need a lot of movement. Now don't worry that these blobs of colours are, uh, they've run into each other because what I do is when they've semi-cured I actually cut them in half and the the fact that we've got some interesting shapes actually makes for some interesting designs on the glass so don't worry too much about that. Now I forgot to turn on the video for the other glass but luckily I realised before starting this one. So all I'm doing here is I've actually left the resin to cure probably for about three hours um, but I did go back and check on it regularly um, because because of the time of year and it's quite warm um, I was concerned that it would cure quite quickly so in winter it would take a lot longer to get to the stage but if you just go back and test the resin now what you want it to be doing is be cured enough that you can actually touch it and you're not lifting any of the resin off the paper but um, not too cured that it's actually too stiff. So, and as you can see, I'm just applying the parchment, uh, baking paper and resin to the glass at the top and then pulling it in a downwards motion so that it, it moves down the glass. But what I'm also doing, you can see here, I'm adding a little bit of heat before pulling the paper off. Now this is to just reactivate the resin just so that it flows um, more freely down the glass because if I was to just stick it and pull the paper off you, most of it would remain on the paper so by doing this it means that the the resin is actually sticking to the glass and also by heating it like I'm doing here I'm actually encouraging the resin to run down the glass but not too much so this has been left overnight and is now fully cured so now we're just going to tidy this up so any stray stringy bits that are um, as you can see here on the glass which are going up to the top of the glass I'm now going to trim them off with a sharp knife 
So I'm just gently using the edge of the blade to cut into the resin and then just lift that off and that comes off quite easy. So I want to go around and do that and there's two reasons why I do this. One is to tidy it up but two is to remove any resin from the rim of the glass. So that way if anybody wants to use the glass um, for um, drinking wine, for the purposes of why you've got a wine glass, then they can, the, the wine and the lips and things are not going to be in contact with the resin. So this is why I'm trimming this off. Now I will of course, when I come to put these into the gallery, I will put um, a, a disclaimer saying that one, the, you know, you shouldn't have direct contact with the resin, with food stuff and obviously um, drink, but also not to put it in the dishwasher and various things like that. So, I mean, ideally I would prefer people to use these as just more as a decorative item, you know, maybe stick some LED lights in the bottom and then, or even just stick a, a plain white candle in there. Now, I, I wouldn't recommend lighting a candle either because I don't know what effects heat has over time with cured resin and um, so I would err on the side of caution but I am tempted to put a candle in into um, one of these and let it one of the little tea lights and let it burn and just to see what happens with the resin so I may well do that and, and give you my findings on that also so here as you can see this piece of resin actually went right up to the lip of the glass so I'm actually removing it so I'm using the natural line of where the resin uh, big thick drips of resin end now because this is a little bit thicker it was harder to remove so I'm just going to apply some heat which makes it easier for the knife to cut through and obviously I don't want to apply too much pressure with the knife so I don't want to smash the glass so by just adding a little bit of heat um, I'm able to trim that excess resin off and make it uh, look nice and te neat and tidy, really. Sorry about the squeaks on here. It's uh, <laughs> the knife through the resin is quite squeaky. And as you can see, that came off quite easily. So I'll just go around, make sure that all of this is trimmed up. Um, looks nice and neat and tidy. There's no excess resin down the lip and I'll give the glass a good clean um, with just soap and water. Um, after I've given it a wipe with um, some rubbing alcohol to make sure there's no residue left on the glass. And then that's pretty much it. Good to go. So that's it for today. Some very simple resin wine glasses. As you can see they look quite effective and I think they'll make a nice addition in any home. So if you enjoyed this video as always please give me a thumbs up or better still subscribe to my channel. You'll find a list, of um, a list in the description of the products used and any handy links to my Instagram, Facebook and various things like that you'll find that in the description. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to bring you some more ideas for your resin. So until then, bye for now.